class. Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about circles and arcs. So let's start off with some vocabulary. There's a lot here, so we're just going to run through it as quickly as possible. All right, so a circle is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a given point. We call that point the center. So every point on the circle is the same distance away from the center. Now that distance is what we call the radius. So the radius is the segment from the center to the circle itself. So here is a radius from the center to the circle. The diameter is the segment all the way across the circle. So from one side through the center all the way to the other side, that's going to be our diameter. All right, and then the relationship between the diameter and the radius is that the diameter is 2 times the radius. All right, so now let's look at the next set here. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. For example, APB is a central angle. So this would be a central angle. All right, and then an arc is the part of the circle. So from A all the way to B, outside it would be the arc, and it actually follows on the circle itself. Now a minor arc is going to be an arc that's less than half of the circle. For example, AB would be a minor arc because it's less than half. A major arc would be more than half of the circle. And if we look at the circle, if we go from A to B one direction, it's, it's a minor arc. If we go from A to B the other direction, it's a major arc. So we need a way to denote which direction we go. If we use only two letters, like AB, we're going to go the shortest way between A and B. If we use three letters, for example, ACB, then we go from A through C first and then to B. So it tells us we go in a specific direction. We never use any more than three letters, even if there's more points in between them. We always just use either two for minor arc or three for major arc. All right, and then a semicircle is going to be half of the circle exactly. All right, and then last little bit here, we have measure of a minor arc is going to be equal to the central angle. So measure, so arcs measure in degrees, just like angles. All right, so the measure of um, a minor arc, because it's less than half the circle, is always going to be between 0 and 180. Measure of a major arc is always going to be between 180 and 360. And you can usually find a minor arc and a major arc um, if they make up the entire circle together, you can take 360 minus the minor arc to get the major arc. And then, of course, half a circle, the measure of our semicircle, is exactly 180 degrees. All right, so let's look at some examples here and just kind of play with some numbers a little bit. So let's look. So we have a few numbers on our diagram, and we know that a semicircle is 180 degrees. So we can start putting information on here. For example, if this angle here is 60 degrees, then I know that this angle has to be 120 so that it ends up being half of the circle, 180 degrees. I also know that if QR is 40, then the angle QTR is also going to be 40. And the arc RS is going to be 60 because minor arcs are always the same measure as their central angle. So there's a lot of things we can do with this circle already without really having to calculate anything. So let's start filling this in. RS is going to be 60 because it's a minor arc. It's the same as its central angle. PQ, which is this one. Okay, so now we have to find the length of PQ. Remember, if this is 40 and we need it to be 180 degrees, then this has to be 140 degrees. And this has to match because it's a central angle and a minor arc. So we get 140 here, and that's also a minor arc because it's less than half the circle. Uh, the measure of arc RPS. So if I start at R and I go through P all the way to S, that's going to start here. It's going to go all the way around to here. So that is RPS right there. And notice it's the entire circle except for 60 degrees. So we can just do 360 minus 60 and get 300. That's going to be an example of a major arc. All right, so we can go through the rest of this. PQR, so from P to Q to R, is half of a circle. That's 180, so that's a semi-circle. All right, measure of QS is 40 plus 60, so we can add arcs together too. 40 plus 60 to get QS, so we get 100 degrees there. 
All right, that's going to be a minor arc because it's less than 180 degrees. All right, QSP. So from QSP is the entire thing except for 140 degrees. So if I take 360 minus 100 gives me 260, minus 40 gives me 220 degrees. That's going to be a major arc. All right, and then QPS is everything but 100, so that's going to be 260. And that's also a major arc. So it kind of gives you an idea of how these things relate to each other going around our circle. All right, next we talk about circumference of a circle. So circumference is the distance all the way around. It's kind of like perimeter, but we don't have a bunch of sides to add up. But it's the distance all the way around our circle. And that's going to be a pi times diameter or 2 times pi times the radius. This is usually how you see these formulas um, because 2 times the radius is diameter. They mean the same thing. And why they split up the 2 and the r, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's just because it sounds better. So really, you could think of it like 2 times the radius times pi. You could even think of this as diameter times pi instead of pi times diameter. When we write our numbers, we always put pi second, pi last, when we write our numbers. So it seems kind of uh, intuitive to say that our formula should have pi last instead of first or in the middle. All right, so remember radius goes from the center to the circle. Diameter goes all the way from one side of the circle through the center. So keep that in mind. So here, our first example, they want us to give exact answers and approximate answers to the nearest hundredth. So exact answers are going to have pi in our answer. So it's going to be with pi. Approximate answers are going to be without pi. It's going to be using our calculators and then rounding to a decimal. So if I'm given diameter, I can do diameter times pi. And then because it's a length, we want to use our units. But we're not going to square them or anything. It's just a length. So this would be my exact answer. 14 pi centimeters. Now, if I want my approximate answer to the nearest hundredth, I would take that and I would plug it into my calculator and I would get 43.98 centimeters. So using our calculators, notice there's no more pi that we can see because we multiplied it by pi in our calculators. All right, so circumference, using our radius, we're going to use 2 times pi times the radius. So 2 times the radius times pi is going to be 9 pi. Uh, oops, not centimeters this time. We have meters. And then if we use our calculators to approximate that, we are going to get, oops, I'm so sorry, 2 times, two times 8 is 16, not 9. 16 pi meters. Oh, yay. All right. And then, so when we uh, use our calculators, plug that in, we get 50.27 meters. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is arc length. So we talked about arcs are part of the circle. We talked about how to find the length of the whole circle. But what if I only want the length of part of the circle, of just one arc? So what we're going to do is we're going to do arc length as a fraction of the circumference of the circle. So our fraction of the circumference is going to be the entire, um, the entire measure of our circle or the measure of our arc a, B divided by the entire measure of our circle, which is 360. So that's going to get us that fraction of the circle. And then uh, we want to multiply that by the length of the entire circle, which is 2 pi r. So that's going to give us, or pi times diameter, depending on which one you have, if we're given r or d. All right, so let's look at a couple examples to see how this one works. So if I have diameter here, I know that my circumference is going to be 10 pi, pi times diameter. But what if I want just the length of this part of the circle? Well, if you look, AB is exactly half of our circle. So this one's a little easier. We're just going to take half of 10 pi, and that's going to be 5 pi. 
centimeters. So there's the arc length of AB for the first one. If we look at our second one, if the radius is 6, then our circumference is going to be 2 times 6, which is 12 pi. And AB, in this case, 90 degrees is exactly 1 quarter of our circle. So we're going to take, oops, not a half. We're going to take 1 quarter of our entire circumference, which is going to give me 3 pi meters. Now the next one is a little tougher because 145 degrees isn't uh, as easy of a fraction of our circle as the other two. So what we want to do is really look at how to figure out the fraction of our circle. So we're going to take 145 degrees out of 360. That's going to give us our fraction of the circle. And then we want to multiply that by the circumference of our circle. Our radius is 14.2, so I take 14.2, I double it, and then multiply it by pi. So we have a lot of numbers going on here, and we can simplify this. Um, let's see, find the arc length. It doesn't say that we have to round at all. So in this case, let's see, we've got 145 over 360, um, let's just plug this one into our calculators and give an approximation answer. So we should get approximately 35.94 feet. If it doesn't say, if it says you have to have an exact answer, you want to leave pi in your answer, then just multiply the numbers together. Don't multiply it all the way to pi and you should be fine. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching and remember, Math is fundamental.